Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Okay, so on the dipole antenna project, AC4DM and KY4CKP are taking our length of wire. Now, we've already cut this to 135 feet. So for your 80 meter dipole, what you're going to have to do, you need half a wave, and then the calculation is 468 divided by your frequency. If we do 3.6 for 80 meters, that comes out to about 135. So that's what we've got. Now we'll probably shorten it a smidgen as we go. And what we're doing is we're taking our 135 feet of wire here, and then we're going to double back and cut it in half. And that'll give us our two ends for the 80 meters. All right, so KY4CKP is now putting together the toroid for uh, this project. I believe he's got that in his hand and then he's got a length of the 174 cord that he's going to uh, begin to wrap. Now how many windings do we need on this Chris? I believe it's 14, 14 or 15. Our directions tell us right in here. So we will double check. See what we need. And folks we got these instructions right off the website so this is uh, going to be easy to find. Let's see. It's up at the top of that last page that you just went. RG174. 12 to 14 turns. Yeah, 12 to 14 turns for RG174. Uh, only about 78 turns if you're going to use RG58 or something. A little bit thicker and heavy okay. duty like that. We've got that really th small diameter RG74, yeah. don't 174? Yeah, RG174. For using RG, you know, 300 or something like that. Right. Similar to that. And they have also a pattern they recommend that you do. <clears throat> they have sort of a pattern. Of course, we're going to put a lot of turns on there, so it'll uh, well, what somewhat fill it up. You, you turn something in one direction, you go yeah. across, and back, turn it backwards the other yeah, way. Yeah, turn it the other way. That so, way, that has a tendency to cancel because of of the polarity, you know. And then they're all north this way, and then you turn it the other way, and it'll cancel out. Okay, cool. I have to cut it. All right, so now what we've done is we've measured about 45 centimeters, or about 17.7 inches, as the length that we need to actually begin our windings around this toroid. And we're looking at about 12 to 14 turns, so half of them will go in one direction, and then we'll go across, and then we'll do half in the other direction, according to our Elmer AC4DM. Objective is, is to cancel out your stray RF. Let's get that on the outside of your line. Uh, okay. Chris, you got enough there, or are we going to have to lengthen it? That's only about five on the reverse. And you've run out of wire? Yeah. All right, so we'll just have to do it again. All righty, so we're going to fish it through so that we can do the other seven going in the opposite direction, and that'll cancel, cancel them out. So Chris just finished the last turn, I think. Yeah. Now we go through the rabbit hole, up around, and begin our next set of turns. Come back the other way. And again, once we get done, we'll bring you back. All right, so what we have is seven windings on both halves and then the two middle ones, which cancel. So the main thing here is uh, to make sure you have even numbered turns on each halves, right, uh, AC4DM? That's correct. All right, so that part of the toroid is done, and we'll bring you back in the next segment. Okay, so now what we've done is we've zip-tied the toroid so that the windings don't come uh, loose after we uh, do the full install. So toroid is now done. Now we move on to the next segment. All right, so we're going in 8 millimeters. So what we're doing here, folks, is we're cutting the uh, RJ174 to get the jacket and so forth. So you do this in two stages. This little cutter, we're going to put it in about 8 millimeters. We're going to... Uh, yeah, that's not quite right. We're going to try that... Uh, 
twist move that uh, KY4CKP did again. And it should just uh, go the depth that we need to remove the jacket. And yes, these uh, cutters and crimpers are in the library of AC4DM. There we go. So now the outer sleeve or outer jacket has been removed. Now we move on to the next step. So what we've done here is we've laid out the uh, SMA connector that we're going to use and uh, AC4DM is helping us out with the solder job. So we'll get right back as we begin the solder and the uh, connector uh, installation. All right. So what we've got is we've got the shielding back from it and we've exposed the copper tip for ultimately the connector. So you can see this under the magnifying glass. This uh, is pretty close to what we need. So now we get to put on our connector. All right, so uh, take two, we are putting some solder in the small little hole, which will ultimately anchor the tip that we're installing and when you onto the, the soldering iron, it will wick down inside. Right. And that's all you need, Chris. I think that's plenty. So if we've done our job, we got to let it cool. We have now a tip on the end, which will be a part of the SMA connector, and then we've got to install the rest of it. So we'll bring you back after this delicate solder job. Be right back. All right, so the uh, the final part to uh, putting the connector together here is to take the shielding, right, Chris, and uh, wrap it around the brass and then put the barrel connector or the barrel uh, sleeve, I guess you call it, Crazy. or just the crimp sleeve, and then crimp it down with the tool that you've got there in your hand. And we've already done that. So like Julia Childs, we're showing you the... Uh, finished uh, product here but uh, uh, Chris yanked on it pretty good didn't come off so we think we've got good solder and we think we've got a good crimp and uh, we'll bring you back in the next segment for our next phase all right so Don is taking off the outer jacket here on the 174 on the other end which ultimately is going to be the uh, shielding as well as the center conductor one of the dipoles will solder to just the shielding and one of the dipole ends will be soldered to the center conductor. So again, Don's using his super sensitive shield removal tool. Just about got it. Or you could use one of those, yeah. All right, so we're bringing in the uh, actual tool here for removing the outside shielding on the 174. Boom. There it is. And there it is. All right, so we'll uh, pull the shielding back, expose the center conductor, and then we will be soldering the two dipole ends, one to shield and one to center conductor. We'll bring you right back. So now the, uh, I guess you call it the finished product of exposing the uh, center conductor with the shielding is now done. If I can get this to focus, there we go. The shielding and the center conductor are exposed and those two parts will be, thanks Chris, those two parts will be soldered one to one dipole half and the other to the other dipole half. So when we come back to solder, we'll bring you back. All right, so now we're tinning the uh, shield wires and the center conductor. KY4 CKP's already applied some flux to the wires. Waiting for it to heat up. Put this solder against the tip of your iron where the heat is. There we go. All right, now we're moving to the center conductor. Just doing the same thing, just to make sure we get good connectivity when you're using these braids 
A lot of this wire is just a copper braid. That looks good, Chris. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here. And we'll trim that down. Nice, and then we're going to trim both of these down. So we'll be back when we're ready to solder the uh, pieces together. So. Okay, so now we're soldering the two together. This is one of the dipole ends to the center conductor. And we're just now basically making them electrically connected. And then we'll trim this off to make it pretty. Alrighty. So we've got one of the dipoles now soldered to the shielding of the RJ174. And we've got the other dipole now uh, soldered to the center conductor. And we've got them uh, neatly uh, moved to either side. We're going to put some goop, I think is the technical term we're going to use, uh, some kind of glue or... Uh, something but uh, just to make it a little bit more permanent and then this part will be done and we're really really close at this point we've got an end on the other end of the 174 and now we've got the two dipoles connected it won't be long before we'll be testing SWR be right back all right we're back we're about to do some hot glue utilizing the Cricut glue gun here provided by WM4LM and if I can get this to uh, get a little bit closer oh that's looking beautiful Chris it's almost like you've used one of these before. But uh, we've got the pink glue gun. And uh, yeah, we're going to call it the Cricut. Some of you will get that reference. And uh, we're just going to do a nice little uh, messy job here. But uh, good enough. We just wanted to protect it and to keep the wires from moving around. And we're done. We're going to let this dry. And then we will bring you back. All right, Chris. This is our first test of the new non-linked dipole at the moment uh we have got our end soldered together we've got our wires soldered together we put a pl259 here on the end so that we can connect it to the mfj259 that ac4dm is going to loan us and we got to uh, string this up so we'll bring you back after we get it strung out and we have it connected to the meter now we're out here we're going to be hooking up the uh, mfj259 uh to the uh newly constructed antenna we're hoping uh, all the connectors are good and that we'll get a good reading so let's see we're going to hook it up to the battery here give it a little bit of power and let me switch over here and look over his shoulder Three point six. Two point oh five eight there, it's just three to one, so it's just laying on the ground. Right. So it's not shorted or anything of that nature, so that's good. That means we're in the ballpark. Yep. We are in the ballpark. So your megahertz is there on the right, we're at about what, three point three? And the uh, uh, well, it's actually two down to two point zero five nine because it's extra long. Oh, okay. And the SWR is it's three point three point three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the way mine is on the. And if we go all the way up to three point six, what is it? All right. Let's see if we can. Us. 
So let's see, we want to... Uh, you want to be between 2147 there. There you go. Right there. And then dial it uh, clockwise to 36. Yeah. There we go. Too high. Yeah, it's still up high. Possibly if you will get them off the ground, it will make a difference. Well, what we can do is Chris and I can, uh, can pull them up off the ground and see what you get. Okay, well, All right, let's give that a shot. Chris, it looks like, let me stand next to Don here. It looks like, we're going to get you on camera today, Don, okay. um, that uh, we were at 1.6 at 3.168 megahertz. Right. So we're below the band, which is what we anticipated. But that we got it that down to that on the first try after all the soldering, the connector creation, all of that. We're right where we thought we would be, and now we just need to tune it by adjusting our length, right? Just shortening the length will bring it up in frequency. Bring it up in frequency. So, folks, uh, we're not done. We're going to do a little bit of tuning. We want to get the 80 meters part of this tuned, and then we will uh, bring you back, and we'll see what the uh, MFJ uh, analyzer shows us once we uh, shorten it a little bit. But now we've got to make some calculations. How much shorter do we make it? So, Don, what would you typically do? Take off? A few inches at a time, or how do you? Well, no, I'd go something like uh, two or three foot and start there and see what that does. What are you fellas doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, so now after a couple of uh, tuning exercises, what was the SWR again there, AC4DM? Well, at uh, about 3.6.5, it was 1.5 to 1. 1.5, yeah, 3.6, actually it was 3.7, wasn't it? 3.7 point something, it was 1.5, so that gets us up on the band a little bit. Yeah. So our next step is now to figure out our 10 meters, right. 20 meters, and 40 meter lengths. Right, you need to uh, take your formula and figure out your 10 meter lengths, cut them to that, and then tune that to the frequency that you want to tune it for 10 meters, and that's where you want to set it, and then you work outward from that point. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Folks, we'll bring you back uh, once we start uh, figuring out the individual links. We'll probably do the links on one end, kind of show you what we have done, because at this point it's just segmenting this wires, the two dipole wires, and then tuning it in. So we'll bring you back in the next segment once we begin the links. All right, we're finishing up this afternoon on part one of our uh, linked dipole series. Uh, AC4DM, what were the final numbers for 10 meters? Now this is our first link and it took several iterations, but what did we eventually uh, actually see? Well, what we actually seen was that uh, the low SWR was like 1.1 1 .1, down at about 28,200 and uh, all the way up to 28,8 is 1.5, so that covers the band, that portion of the band with no problem. That is really usable. Really usable. Chris, what did we learn on this particular project? Well, you have to uh, have a consistent testing platform, so you need to make sure that you're set up how you're going to deploy, and that way you'll get legitimate numbers on, on SWR and your impedance there. Right, because I, I mean, we're not trying to hide anything from anybody. We probably spent the last two hours just making sure that we had the right length and that our testing platform was going to match how it was going to be deployed ultimately. And once we had all those things, then we really started to dial it in a lot quicker. And just to show everybody, you can see we're utilizing this telescoping fiberglass pole to get it up to about 20, 21 feet, which is which what is recommended for the soda beams that we're trying to mimic here. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Again, this is just the first segment, which is for 10 meters, but we're looking to also do 20, 40, and 80, right? Yeah, I think those are going to be four good usable bands that a lot of hams would use for any kind of deployments, whether you're doing soda or poda or any kind of work. Exactly. Well, all righty, we'll cut it short here. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. I'm KY4 CKP Chris. I'm AC4DM, done. All righty, gentlemen, uh, we'll cut it here, and uh, we'll see you guys in part two when we add the other segments. 73s. 73.